recording. Hey, brother, you just start where you want to. Hello. Hi. So, everyone. everyone. Jason. Welcome back in to Looking Up at the Lights. I'm Jason Willis. This is Adam Harder, my co-host. I have many felonies. We're slumming it from the car this week because hey. we lack of a location. It's perfectly fine. I like cars. Sometimes I sleep in them. Car, Not mine, but I'll car, sleep in them. Car cast instead of a podcast. So, where, Jason, would you, where would you like to start this week? Questions. Questions? Let's do the fan questions. I, like, yeah. I always love the fan questions. First, we're going to the gypsy. The, the, <laughs> the gypsy. My One of my best friends, Mr. Mike Carley. Mike Carley. Mike Carley wanted to know, up, Jason, what's the best wrestling arcade game? He, um, I think when he did his question, I think I wrote that down wrong, he specifically said WWF. WWF. But, I, Mike, I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna, and I'm going to age myself here, the first video game, and me and Adam were talking about this on the car ride over, the first uh, arcade game experience that I ever had with pro wrestling was a, a game called Matt Mania mm-hmm. in 1985, and it was made by Ty, 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 Taito. Taito, Taito, yeah, and it had such luminaries such as uh, Insane Warrior and Golden Dynamite Hulk Tommy and, and Coco Savage. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, at the there was a rudo uh, Mexican style wrestler. Yeah, there, there was a lot of punch kick, and I think I think you could do like a whip in the ropes and like a clothesline. And from the little bit I read, and a there little, was and a little suplex, but you couldn't do a whole lot. Yeah, from what I read, there was suplex, um, whip into the ropes, clothesline, pile driver, and then right somebody. Yeah, I was gonna say somebody had pile driver for the finisher. And yeah. then you could do finishers, and they were all. It's like for yeah. me. Uh, I go towards one and one only. I'm going for WrestleFest because it had the Warrior, it had Jake Roberts, it had WrestleFest over Superstars. Yes, WrestleFest just because it had my favorite version of uh, the Ultimate Warrior in it. Which which so. ones were the LOD, the Tag Champs? WrestleFest. Was it WrestleFest? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and they come out and they got the little like I've, WrestleMania three thing. I've, I've probably played versions of both. Yeah, I love those. So that was Mr. Mike Carley, and I know he's going to say like something interesting, which I love. Uh, and then and we answered your question. What do you yeah. want? What do you want to know? Oh, hold on, I got to pull my phone out for other. Questions. Oh yeah, we have other fan questions too. So I see. I did see one of the little side episode that I did. I only did the um, Riggsy. Uh, yeah, I did Riggsy's question, and I did the one I got offline about uh, the WWF. Why did the WWF never have a TV title? Yeah, which it so. is what it is. Um, the handsomest man on the internet. Oh, he's back. Yes. Oh, yeah. Isaac is back. Isaac and is back. He wanted to know. Our what, good friend Isaac. He wanted to know what you think about Chad Gable's heel turn and what will it will lead to. I, I'm a little confused at Chad Gable's heel turn. I'll tell you why. Because mm-hmm. when CM Punk did his walkthrough and they did the handshake after he walked out, I was like, what was that all about? Yeah. Was that just punk being punk, or uh, uh, yeah? But so I, other than that, um, I'm look. I'm, I'm I've become a Team Adam supporter in which that I want to see Chad get his flowers because yes. Chad Gable is a really good wrestler and he's really under underrated. And I think if he was six three and you know weighed about two fifty, he'd probably be world champ right now. Yeah, he totally would. So. Um, you know, other than being a little bit undersized, the guy's a hell of a talent. And um, yeah, IC title, Chad Gable, all the way. I I think it's going to be he wins the IC title from Sammy, and then that starts his monumental burn down the every building they're in feud with Otis. And I I'm both see that'll be fun. Yeah, that, that will just be fun because so it's it's a it's a thing in wrestling that. When you have an incredible face or a good guy turn, you immediately, at its apex or maybe before its apex, you start your bad guy run. Because, uh, like Jake Roberts said, as much as they love you, they'll hate you that much. And so I'm excited to see what happens that there because Chad Gable is my favorite wrestler on, on the roster right now. Chad Gable also just might be my favorite wrestler. Like, he's inching up there. Uh, so I'm excited to see what Chad Gable holds uh, because the sky's the limit for Chad Gable. Yeah, I'm still wait. I'm still waiting to see if the the turn with Alpha Academy happens and he does add the Creed Brothers, which is rumored. But like I said, rumors are rumors until they become fact. So. Yeah, it, it, the only thing is is the the whole thing of wanting to add Kurt Angle to it. Kurt Angle's too beloved. To yeah, we talked about that last time. Yeah. That, that, 
He's too beloved. Yeah, people are going to love Kurt Angle no matter what he does, and they're gonna, not going to buy him as a heel. So, the man with the best hair on the internet and in real life, Felix Galentianas. Also known what? as my friend FedEx. What's, what's Felix's question? He said, realistically, how far do you think Jimmy and Jay can go as singles competitors? <sighs> they're going to reunite them as part of Roman's group. You know that. Yeah, so that's I'm, coming. I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna say something. Okay. And this is not indicative of them as people. It is not indicative of where they are in their life. It is not indicative of them as people. I think because of all the DUIs and all the the troubles with the law they had, Ouch. Ooh. they they have a ceiling for being single superstars because. They're not going to be able to go to a lot of different countries because so many countries have weird laws about right. DUIs and, and things like that. And I did not think about that. It's it's the whole reason why no one could ever really put their hat on Matt, or on Jeff Hardy because he had had so many yeah. problems. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying they, they still do. I'm not saying they always will. But I think that's what it's going to come down to is that Roman – could be an international champion. Cody is an international champion. Right. And we see now that wrestling is really popular across the seas now. It is, Boy, is it yeah, ever. France, yeah. Italy, Ireland, and it's... What do you think about booking more foreign shows? I'm all for it because yeah. the crowd, man, the, the crowd has got those shows. Yeah, like Cody said, he Hype, said, man. he goes, I'm the world champion, so yeah. i got to be around the world. So that's my only thing about Jimmy and Jay is... And also, they love being a tag team. Mm-hmm. They really do. Like they they are actual brothers that love to, to wrestle with each other. So, I think I think the ceiling is pretty low, unfortunately. And yeah. it's not anything to do with them. Would I like to see Jay get a title run? Yeah, I'd like to see Jimmy get a title run. It's kind of like, and I'm going way back for those of you that are that are my age. It's like Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson. Yeah. Um, back in the day, especially. Yeah, individually they were yeah they were super talented guys, and even Ric Flair said I think Ricky Morton could have been world champion, um, but they were just better as the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, so it's just and I think the Usos are just better as as the as Usos. The Usos. Yeah. So that's that's my personal. Opinion. Not everybody has to be a single star. It's okay. No, there's I'm, no there's no shame in being a great tag team. No, I mean the the Road Warriors were never great single stars. Yeah, so they had singles matches, but they never uh, you know. Yeah. They were not individual champions. Oh, so we got more Felix questions. He, Felix uh, Felix is on a roll today. So is, so is Isaac. Isaac has Felix like, on a roll. <laughs> Felix, Felix and Isaac have a bunch of questions. Okay. So Felix wants to know again. Let's get them all in here. Let's, let's, yeah. let's just do it. Let's tear this thing wide open. He wants to know, do you think CM Punk is living up to the hype on the mic? I'm more of a Punk fan than you are, I think. Yes. And right now, Punk's doing what he needs to do to keep this this feud with him and Drew McIntyre alive uh, until they, you know, both can get clearance to wrestle. And I think it'll be a pretty good feud. I I, I worry a little bit about CM Punk, uh, honestly, from a health perspective because it does seem like he's he's gotten a little bit, you know, dinged up more in his in his later age than and than he did when he was younger, and it happens. But I, you know, I would like that last CM Punk run to be, you know, something something memorable and stuff. And I, I think Phil kills it on the mic. I, I just like I'm calling him by his first name like we're best friends or something. But, uh, no, I think he always carries it on the microphone. There's, I mean, you can't cut AEW promos, no. you, know, you know, where he can, can cuss and do all this other crazy stuff. But I think WWE's leaning a little more towards edgier stuff. And I think we'll see when they make the, the, the switch to Netflix. Yeah. You're, you're gonna you're gonna see some stuff, but right now I think I think CM Punk's carrying it fine on his own. I, I the, the I mean it's it's amazing that the feud as hot as it is, the two guys that, that really can't touch each other. The yeah, they're only on the microphone. Drew's like I said, as, as big as CM Punk is, and as good as CM Punk is, and and always has been on the microphone. Drew McIntyre's killing it. Yeah, he's killing. You know, he's killing it. The edge comes from. That Drew McIntyre isn't afraid to do really silly things as insults, where he will use internet tropes and internet trends mm-hmm. and 
memes yeah. to make fun of CM Punk. Like he was uh, the other day, he was reenacting "Stand" by Eminem with him. Oh and, uh, God, that was beautiful. Yeah, it just so I'm gonna say something that no one ever will believe when I say is like, CM Punk has impressed me uh, the last couple of weeks. What? Yeah. He, Shut up. This I, is coming from Adam Arter. A guy who hates CM the Punk. The guy that does not like A guy that is... It's fight on sight with me and CM Punk. And well, I, well, let I, me say this. I, I like Punk in, in ring. I, yeah. I might could meet Punk on the street and think he's the biggest jerk in the world. I, I don't know. I, I've heard that, and I've heard that from some people. Yeah. So. But he might just be one of those... He might be one of those weird, misunderstood cats. When you get to know him, he, but he might be a cool guy. You just never know. So, I think they're doing a really... It, Reminds me a lot of when the first time Stone Cold broke his uh, broke his neck, mm-hmm. and he didn't want to not be on TV, so he was there every week just cutting promos and yeah. stunning people. It reminds me a lot of that, but with two guys. And uh, now, will the match live up to it? I don't know because Drew McIntyre has such an in-your-face, pick you up, throw you around, punch kick really punch you really kick you style right and cm punk he's he's never had that real physical style like he's had physical matches him and joe like killed each other Mm -hmm. but he he was never really that guy so i i don't know if the matches will live up to the program that's going on right now but that's that's to be seen and i could be wrong so maybe and is it me or does punk at least from outward appearances, just seem like he's in a bitter place mentally. So I will say that like he's having fun with. Like I saw the backstage thing where some, the the kid had drawn CM poop. Yeah, and he's like, "I'm signing that. I'm signing." You know. Yeah, just, it it seems like he's actually having a good time. It seems like he's trying to right some wrongs, maybe. Yeah. And so I, I'm excited about that. The whole thing, I'm excited for. So I, I got that. Um, Next question. Back to Mr. Isaac. He wants to know, should we move to just the four main pay-per-views to a foreign crowd, seeing how appreciative they were of the live show? Ooh, good question. Because, I, you know, Jason, and, and we'll, we'll talk about it in a second, but seeing seeing how they were in France, losing their mind for everything. For backlash. For backlash. Yeah. And then seeing... And also, um, Eric, Bish- Eric Bischoff brought this up, where they had not been to that part of France. They had not been to that part of the world in a couple of years, so they were probably pretty hungry for for wrestling. True, but yeah. To see that crowd for... And Backlash was a good show. But to see the crowd then go from that to see the absolute barn burner that was Walter... Uh, I mean, Gunther and Sheamus, the... At, the other night on Raw, and they were just mild as could be. Yeah, and, and it was in the whole co- American crowds can be weird. Sometimes. Yeah, it it really was the absolute best couple of weeks of wrestling we've had. I've seen three of the best. You know, then we'll get back to foreign crowds in a sec. I've seen three of the best pro wrestling matches I've seen. Period. Um, in the last couple of uh, or in the last week. Yeah. Between Raw and SmackDown. Gunther, Gunther and Sheamus, for sure. Uh, Randy Orton, AJ was on SmackDown was yeah. incredible, and I'm tr- and now uh, it's so memorable I can't even remember it. Hang on, <laughs> I'll get there in a second. And uh, Ricochet. And it was Ricochet and Dragonoff. That yeah. was the other one. And yep. man, uh, what a coming out party for for Ilya Dragonoff. Yeah. Um, just so d- just been really great wrestling and the american crowds have been kind of mild so i i think i think it's one of those situations where we don't know until we try but also it's really hard to move uh, because wwe is such a machine that it's really hard to move rings and production equipment i think from a business perspective not necessarily all the big four pay-per-views but i think it kind of helps the lesser known smaller pay-per-views to be in a foreign market that's what i'm that's what i'm leaning towards that's what i'm thinking yeah i do a couple of shows every because if you did if you did that same backlash show in america it's it's not going to have the same no um crowd participation and impact and stuff like that because i mean that's it's not that it was a there weren't good matches and it wasn't a uh, uh it just wasn't the stack card like 
mania. I think maybe American fans have just gotten a little spoiled. On yeah, the, maybe they're on a little the, jaded. On the, on, the, on the big event, jaded maybe. So uh, Isaac also has another really... I've noticed that at Raw. Like, I, the, I every Raw that I've been to in, in Charleston, the crowd's just kind of meh. Yeah, and it's weird because the, the last couple ones I've seen, it's been really good shows. Yeah. But Isaac has a, a deep question again. Deep. What do you think Deep thoughts. the realistic odds of John Cena coming back for one last major title run, and how do you think that would fit in storyline? It's not going to happen. No, because one, he, out of everybody that's close to Ric Flair's record, Randy is the only one that said he would probably maybe break it. Yeah. Um, it's it's the whole mystique. When you have guys that love Ric Flair so much, even though he's like persona non grata right now, Ric Flair. We had pizza in honor of Ric Flair, by the way, earlier. Oh. Woo! Um, <laughs> it wasn't Pizzano's. <laughs> I know, and we weren't taking pictures with the weight stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but yeah. Steel City, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Even though you're not a sponsor, but you if you want to be. be, if you can be one, yeah, you could be. You could be. But so I don't think anybody is going to break Ric Flair's record now. Maybe John Cena has one last title run, like, and, and I'm just spitballing. Like, so Miz goes down with an injury, and now it's R Truth and John Cena. And every. That would be fun. Every week we get R Truth be like, me and my childhood hero, John Cena. And just. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would make me laugh. But also, maybe, maybe John Cena steps up with Damian Priest and gives him some of that, that special John, C, John Cena, you know, sprinkle. And see, that's where, excuse me, that's where I was going to go with this. I, I think John Cena's in give back mode now. Yeah, well, you know, he's, he's instead only of one, being Superman, he's only uh, won two matches in ten years. Right. So, so yeah, yeah, get, he, get, yeah, get that, guys. John Cena is greedy, and he's being like Hulk Hogan. No, you got when you look at that and put that together. I mean, he's put Austin Theory over. He's putting Solo over. He's uh, who else? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, um, uh, he put Roman over. He's, yeah, he's, you know, he's just yeah. I think, un- I think, I think it's yeah. Undertaker. I think it's like I said. I think it's just. I think John is is now is like okay. I've I've had my run and and done my thing, and now it's just time to get back to the business. And you can tell he still loves it. Yeah. But, so and he's been talking about it. So we'll see. Yeah. But uh, this one's another good one from from my one of my friends, Felix. Same Felix. Um, and, back to Felix. Back to Felix. Uh, so I have a little bit uh, in more intimate knowledge on this situation than, than most. Um, yeah, how do you that feel? That was my piece of paper, and it just made a popping noise. How, like. do, you, uh, how do you think the Gable Stevenson release is gone? Long pause. Um <laughs> He he. I guess he didn't turn out to be what they thought he was going to be, and the the next Kurt Angle, and let him go. So it's it's two parts. The um, the. Uh, I mean, you might have a, a more a deeper perspective on a, perspective on it than I do. I saw the one NXT match and was kind of like meh. But then you said something about he might be going back to he the made Olympics. The qualifiers. Oh, okay. So so that's probably that, that might be part of it. Yeah, and uh, so he's made the qualifiers. And he he never stopped actually competing for for freestyle and Greco Roman wrestling. He never stopped while he was working for WWE. So I like Kurt Angle said it. He's like you can't you got to pick one or the other. Mm-hmm. And I think Gable Stevenson thinks he can get one more gold medal run, which I think he could. He's an incredible wrestler, but I think it comes down to the fact that. He made the qualifiers, and WWE was like, you know what? That that's obviously what you love. Don't worry about it, man. And I'm sure it'll be one of those situations where if he wants to come back, then he can. But because uh, yeah, they did the same thing for Mark Henry. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's and and even when 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 Kurt Angle was going to fight in the UFC, they even said is like, you know what? Take as much time as you. It didn't happen. Yeah. But, uh, I think Gable Stevens is going to have to learn how to talk, though. I mean, which is crazy because when I've, I when I heard him talk at the at the medal ceremony, I was like, this guy could be a pro wrestler. Mm-hmm. But then when he's in pro wrestling, he's all of a sudden is like, Ugh. yeah, I was like, I don't know where the disconnect is because he's a funny guy, he's charismatic, but 
you can be you can be a Terminator and you can be Steve Martin at the same time. It's just it's hard, but you can do it. So that's that's what um that that's what I think is going on with Gable Stevenson. Like here here I go again. I'm gonna get up on this soapbox. You got so many guys that can't talk on their own. And there's only one Paul Heyman. You know why? Why can't managers make a comeback? You know? uh, yeah, the, I'm really wondering where are the managers? Like, there's there's so there's much. Such a big part of the '80s too. And yeah, it's like it's like like everybody's gone. Yeah, and you don't even have to be. I mean, I I don't know what what Rockstar Spud Drake Maverick's doing right now, but mm. he would he would be instrumental. Um, I mean, you have Paul Ellering, and you're not doing anything with him, really. He's just kind of there. Yeah, and, like, I, I was trying to explain to, to Ryan and Chris, shout out, best friends. Um, uh, they were like, who is this guy? It's like, that's precious Paul Ellering. Like, when the Road Warriors didn't, when the Road Warriors were at their peak of not saying much, other than, oh, what a rush, and tell them Paul. Paul did all the talking where he was just like, these two monstrous men are going to disassemble you in a meticulous fashion. Like, it, Paul Ellering was this, like... Plus, the Legion of Doom was a faction back yeah, before. You had other Jay guys, Roberts, too. Uh, King, Kong, King, King Kong Bundy. Yeah, just, you had all these guys in the in the Legion of Doom. Anyway, but... It, it, they don't. They're not doing anything with with certain managers, and, or we're well, not doing anything with managers. Period. So, and then one more from my boy Mark. AEW seems to have all the managers. Yeah, and they don't. They're not doing anything. And they don't do either. anything with them. <laughs> so, uh, Stokely gets the most mic time. Seems like I like him too. Yeah. Oh, he's. I mean, not that he's not good. And shout out to a friend of the show and friend of Jason and a guy that told me I don't have to call him Prince. Prince Nana. Prince Nana. So, uh, Marquise wants to know. Uh, who is somebody else? Yeah, Marquise is a good guy. Marquise wants to know who do we think the best female wrestler is currently. It's going to be hard to to for me to not say Rhea Ripley. Yeah, so everyone is in the shadow of Rhea now, and not just it's it's a whole other. I thing. do want Alexa Bliss to come back. So here I'm going to say this, and it's partly because of her ring work, partly because Rhea has steered into being. A WWE superstar. She interacts with the fans. She, she literally, she goes out of her way to be on social media and be personable. And like, uh, she is living the gimmick. She is the 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 muscle mommy. Like, she has. She really is. But her personality off camera, like when you see her on podcasts and things like that, she's so she's so personable. Yeah, like it's it's really easy to to like. She's, Rhea. Yeah, she's and she's hard. She's hard. Even though she's a heel, she's hard to boo. Yeah, yeah. It's a, and she'll she can still make you boo her, mm-hmm. but and her work is consistent. Like she's not, and when she is the underdog, my God, like she you I feel bad. Watch I one I don't I'm not a big fan of watching women even simulate fight but Rhea has made it really easy to to put her in the the top one percent so there's Rhea and then there's everybody else yeah and um I think I think Rhea is number one and I think somebody that's gonna get there just because of her personality and people like I think Maxine is up there um. And I think she's going to get. Wow, there. that's a strong statement. Uh, she's considering she's, what things that have happened in the past. <laughs> yeah, but I think Maxine's getting up there. She's she's trying. She's earnestly trying to get better. She cares about being a good steward of pro wrestling. And I still think Liv Morgan is so underrated. I think Liv is great too. She's 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 got it there. But, but yeah, but I, I think I think that's kind of where we're at. We're in we're in mommy's era right now. She's. Yeah. It's She's Rhea. on top, and then there's everybody else. It's definitely not Becky Lynch, <laughs> but um, and see, Becky was the hottest thing going there for the longest time. I'm not sure. She hawked herself out. Yeah. And then uh, Marquise wants to know who do we think the most underrated? Well, wrestler- now wait. Now to go oh, back and apologies. explain. Go back and explain that statement before we go on to another. Oh, so Becky for has, people that don't for people that don't know Hulk Hogan or hawking yourself out of a situation is. Becky has so much sway. Politicking. Yeah, yeah, she she politics herself. She can decide when she's going to do something, when she's not going to do something. And 
the wrestling fans and the wrestling community, even though they're so divided at the moment, they're still all hooked in. They they know what's going on. Yeah, they're picking up on it. And when she's been politicizing, it's like she shouldn't have gotten Rhea's belt. When no. Rhea, and that's what happened. So and you could have easily used that. I mean, with two women's titles, you could have used that to elevate somebody else. Yeah, like Liv. And it wouldn't make sense for Liv to take it because she's the one that that's was, the one that she's the one that's got the she's got the angle with yeah, the storyline with yeah. But here we are. Yeah, but, here we are. But Marquise also wants to say or wants to ask, who do we think the most underrated wrestlers right now? Who is the most the, the most underrated wrestler? Chad Gable. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Powerhouse Hobbs. Ooh, I do like Will Hobbs. Yeah. I, I like Will Hobbs a lot. Um, I like Will Hobbs. He, I, We've talked about Powerhouse Hobbs many times on the on the show, between the two shows. Uh, he, um, just an incredible athlete. Yeah, and, and just not well utilized at all. No, he's a guy that I really wish would jump ship to, to WWE. I think... Mm-hmm. I think you'd do well. Like, and even you put Powerhouse Hobbs and Bobby Lashley together, just everybody's yeah. dead. Uh, but uh, Power, I think Powerhouse Hobbs, and I tell you another guy who who I'm starting to warm up to, um, and and it is getting a little it's getting a little sheen here and there. Bronson Reed. Oh, I like Bronson Reed. Yeah, um, I like his work. He kind of reminds me. Of Yokozuna a little bit, a little bit, a um, little, little Yokozuna, a little Bam Bam Bigelow, um, a little um, Bastion Booger, <laughs> but not in a bad way. Okay. Cousin, cousin of our uh, good friend Jay Scott, friend of the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also it's a joke uh, there. Yeah, uh, I'll throw inside, way inside. I'll throw Maxine in there too. I think she's underrated. Um, Maxine's I, getting better. I'm telling you. Yeah, I, I like her. Uh, Hmm. I, 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 you know, I just wonder if that I, she took all that to heart and it's like, man, you know. But she's, you know, give her a break, guys. She's, she's, uh, she's doing well right now. Yeah, and I think she's, I think she's incredible. There's, that's the thing is, there's WWE has so many great wrestlers. It, it's hard, and then you go to other companies. Uh, there's just, so many, there's so many good wrestlers everywhere. Yeah, wrestling is really good right now. It's just so, but yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Chad Gable because not from an actual in ring standard because he's Mark. never he, I am <laughs> um, he's never really gotten his chance to shine. So I'm hoping that the this feud with his heel turn and all that I'm hoping that it turns into something. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna go with Powerhouse. And then Marquise has one more question, and I got my answer ready. All right, go for it. Which wrestler do you hate seeing on screen? I'll let you go first. Cause Johnny I Gargano. I, I think I gotta think about it. Real. I hate Johnny Gargano. It's a good answer. E- I'm sorry. Oh no, I'm sorry. Every time somebody says Johnny Gargano, uh, he's he's feigning. You, the people that are on audio only oh, can't wait, see. He's oh, feigning taking a nap. Oh, sorry. Every time somebody says you Johnny, put a snore in there. <laughs> There you and, go. Yeah, he doesn't even get me into rim sleep. Johnny, Johnny Gargano. He doesn't even get me into rim sleep. That's how that's how boring Johnny Gargano is. I hate Johnny Gargano. Ooh, I like Marvel movies. Ooh, I'm an okay wrestler. Ooh, I have the personality of wet cardboard. Blah. You know who I'm gonna say? And I'm gonna oh man, I'm gonna piss people off. Hmm. But the Adam Cole. Oh, no, I'm with you. <laughs> it's just like, you know, and I know he's injured right now, but even when he's healthy, I'm just like, what is the big deal about this guy? So here's my whole thing about it is... I get Adam Cole off of my television. So he got pointing, he got the Jeff Jarrett points up and baby over. Mm-hmm. But can you tell me anything in an Adam Cole match that is different from every other smaller, flippy wrestler? Yeah, I'm thinking. The, I'm with you. I, I, I'm th- thinking the same thing. Point me out, like it, it, when I go back over years, it's like point me to a great uh, Undertaker match. Okay, Undertaker and Shawn WrestleMania 26. Like I can go to that, right? Yeah. Pick a great Ric Flair match. Okay, Ric Flair uh, and Ricky Steamboat Wrestle War '89. Point me to a great Adam Cole match. Crickets. Yeah. You, I, I, 
Because no, no, not one match stands out from the other one. No, because they're all the same. Yeah. And so, no, I, I'm completely valid on on Adam Cole. I just... and So come and get me, Adam Cole fans. Yeah, if, if you're not too busy. Yeah. So, we got that. And then, uh, yeah, the only other things we got... Time for the, the Nick uh, Opaluski. I hope I'm saying your name right, by yeah, the way, Nick. Yeah, Opaluski. Opaluski. Opaluski so fan got, service. Yeah, we got that in King of the Rings. By the way, I'm going to start... Do you want to do King of the Ring first, or do you want to do this Royal Rumble? Uh, you know what? I'm going to start. I'm going to start charging for this. <laughs> let's uh, let's go. You want you want me to talk about stuff? Okay, I need I, J- Jason needs some money. So uh, we'll go King of the Ring first. You want to go King of the Ring? You know, for uh, so a co- for a long time. Adam's so excited. A long time, King of the Ring meant a lot to to pro wrestling. Yes. You had the King Harley Race. You had Jim Duggan. You had Bret Hart being back-to-back King of the Rings. You had Owen Hart King of the Ring, and, and then he became the King of Hearts. You had Stone Cold. You had Hunter or Hunter Helmsley. He had all these great moments in King of the Ring, and then you. It was had, kind of a precursor to, like, who you thought that, like the next guy was yeah, going to get the and, big and rub. It kind of died off for a little bit, and then Kurt Angle was King of the Ring and was incredible. But the last person... King Booker. Yeah, I was going to say, the last person that made <laughs> King was... of the Ring anything was national treasure, friend of the show, good steward of pro wrestling, Booker T. Yes. Um, before Roman had the, the finger point up, right. King Booker had the King pinky up. King Booker. King Booker! Yeah. And just... Talk about taking a gimmick and having fun with it and just God, running with Booker it. God, Booker T is... Booker T. Just, so then when you think... The King of the Ring went away for a little bit. Brock Lesnar was King of the Ring. Like it had, it had moments. Yeah, but they didn't put the emphasis on it. No. Like, like they're tr- now they're trying to go back to because now it's it's its own little pay per view, which is great yeah, as it should be. As it was, yeah, as it was before. It was but one of the big. It was one of the big pay per views. Austin, uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what is Austin Creed? What is his working name? Xavier. Oh, Woods. Xavier Woods. Yeah. Yeah. When Xavier Woods. Became King Woods and tried to emulate, and he even said it. He's like, "I'm just gonna do a bad Booker T." And <laughs> he made he made it kind of kind of important. And then when WWE decided they were gonna do a Queen of the Ring, and they gave somebody finally the shine they needed, being Selena Vega because right. Selena Vega is incredible, and she was doing the Queen Selena. Let's add her to the underrated. Oh, list. It's Queen Selena! God, I love yeah. it. Um, uh, it just it it kind of died out, but now WWE decided. You know what? We're bringing King of the Ring back. Slight slight interruption. Fantasy booking. Selena Vega and Cora Jade feud. Book it. Book it, Hunter. Book oh it. yeah, that's a, I, yeah, that'd be a good match. Book it, Hunter. So sorry. <laughs> oh, fir- first round and the King of the Ring. First round, Sheamus and Gunther. Good God, what a match! It was like two trash cans and two... Uh, no, I reframe. It was like a live-action Transformers movie. They were just beating the crap out of each other, and I loved every second of it. Like, it, the visual that I get, you know when the two Rams are up on the mountain and they're fighting for dominance yeah, and they're just <laughs> button heads continuously? That, that was this match. It was incredible. And, and uh, going back to, to what the crowds are doing, the crowd wasn't that into it, which is insane to me. And then Ricochet and Dragonoff, which was also that that France crowd would have been losing their yeah, minds they, they if they would have they'd shown these matches. They would have thrown all the baguettes and the croissants on the street. Um, but and then also pipe in a creep. Uh, it, which is also weird to me that they had in on the other side they had um, Rey Mysterio and. Austin Theory not on TV. Yeah, what about that? Yeah, I I don't know. And then LA Knight. I got the hiccups from the pizza. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> LA Knight moving on, and we're, we're gonna have more. Yeah. Uh, more, we're gonna have more excellent wrestling, but King of the Ring right now is incredible, and man, WWE is just killing it. And also, if you want to show how much you love WWE, you can always use our affiliate link, which you can. helps us out for. For uh, 
WWE shop. Yeah, get yourself a, a new uh, Tiffy Time shirt or something. I don't know. If <laughs> Tiffany Tiffy has a Time shirt. shirt. <laughs> I like Tiffany Stratton, though. She's great. Yeah, I like Tiffany. So, Nico. Get you a get you a um a, a Cody Rhodes foam finger or something. Yeah, get like yourself that. a Cody Rhodes neck tattoo temporary thing. Um, I don't know if they have this. I don't know if they have that either. So, the original go old school and get a cane mask. <laughs> the original Willis Show super fan. Yes, he was Nick O. Nick Opaluski. Opalowski. It's, it's got to be Opalus. Opa. It's O P A L E. Well, we should probably shouldn't be saying his name. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Spelling his name over a nationally syndicated. I'm sure podcast. there's. A, I'm sure there's a bunch of Polish. I guess guys. we are. Yeah. A bunch of Polish guys with the same. O- name. Opa Opaluski. Yeah. It's, it's got to be. So Nick wanted to. Nick's asked us to. He's review. been asking for 1990 Royal Rumble for a while to review this, and I, and I know why. Why. Do I know why? Yeah, because everybody it's revisionist history. Everybody remembers that moment between Hogan and Warrior when they finally locked eyes in the middle of the ring. And I got to tell you, I'm going to be the negative Nancy on this show. Okay. This was not a great pay-per-view. No. no. Oh, you actually agree with me. So, it, so I'm, I'll be the first to tell you. This I'm, is not my, this was not my favorite show to review. Sorry, Nick, if, no, it, if it's yours. I, I have rose colored, road, rose colored glasses. Rose. Uh, for Rhodes, this show. Rhodes, 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 Dusty Rhodes, baby, uh, but, uh, baby. This I, was not a good show. You baby. know what? We're leaning into that. I have rose color glasses on for this one, but because it had at my peak of my fandom of the Ultimate Warrior, it had my favorite Ultimate Warrior paint scheme. It had my favorite Ultimate Warrior moments. Speaking of Rhodes, wasn't it that there a Brother Love segment where they just ran down Sapphire the entire time. Yes, because it was oh, Sensational Sherry came out. That's right. Yeah, it was yeah. right before. I forgot to write that down in my notes. <laughs> it was right before uh, SummerSlam when uh, when Sapphire jump ship to with the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> Another thing that didn't make any sense. And so my favorite thing about that, and I wish I could find it. I'm gonna have to find it because. Uh, Dusty is looking for Sapphire and he can't find her. And Mean Gene is is interviewing him and he's just like, Dusty Rhodes, what seems to be the problem? And he's like, Mean Gene, baby, I've been looking high, I've been looking low for sweet, sweet Sapphire. Sapphire and I can't find her, baby. And then out of nowhere, because I guess he didn't have anything to do, here comes Hacksaw <laughs> and Dusty Rhodes goes, Hacksaw, baby, have you seen Sapphire? And Hacksaw's like, well, I don't know, Dust, but I'll keep an eye out for her. And I'm like, <laughs> It's just like you're gonna, you're missing your you're missing your valet, so you send the world's greatest detective Hexall Jim Duggan, and he's gonna sniff her out. He's gonna find her. I hope I hope you've listened to the show this far in to catch that the two impressions. Uh, but, but it's the like that has stained my brain from that year's SummerSlam when Sapphire joins forces with a million dollar man. And he's just <laughs> Dusty Rose is I've been looking high and I've been looking, looking low, low and I cannot find seat sapphire. And just the XL Jim Duggan I'll be, I'll keep an eye out for Dust <laughs> Like but So it's right before that and it's at my peak fandom of WWEF and it's my peak fandom for the for uh, the Ultimate Warrior. I could I was the only we're probably one. just high on the carbon monoxide oh, at this yeah. point. But I was the only <laughs> warrior fan. Nick, I'm gonna. This goes straight to your ears, my precious Greek angel. This, this, I, I only cared about the Ultimate Warrior. The reason I love pro wrestling is the Ultimate Warrior. One of the earliest memories I have is the Ultimate Warrior running down. He's wearing dark green Kelly shorts or tights. For he has, those of you. <laughs> On audio only, if you could just see the happiness that is Adam's face He's right got now. White knee pads, white boots, orange tassels, green and orange face paint. He had not been dying his hair yet. He runs down and just starts leveling the killer bees. Like it is one of my earliest memories. I love the Ultimate Warrior. I'm dead inside. <laughs> so when you want to talk, that, that being said. <laughs> When you want to talk about Rumble 
With the Royal Rumble from 1990, I'll lay it to you. First of all, we're opening it up with the Ax- Rougeos. Axaw Jim Duggan. I'll look at I'll keep an eye out for it, I wish I, could, I wish I could play all those Vince McMahon intro. Axaw Jim Duggan. So I go with the Rougeos. We're opening up with the Rougeos and the Bushwhackers. The Rougeos fresh off of Jacques Rougeau knocking Dynamite Teeth. Dynamite Kid's teeth out with a roll of quarters. Yeah, it's like, do you realize it's the last appearance of the Rougeos as a tag team? Yeah, because uh, Raymond Raymond disappears and Jacques... Uh, he had a lot of injuries. I heard he had a lot of injuries. Yeah, Raymond was... was and uh, Jimmy Hart's with him and they're wearing those weird bicycle shorts. Yes. But uh, so yeah, Raymond is retiring, and Jacques is going to become the Quebecer or the, the Mountie. The Mountie. <laughs> Whoa! I'm the Mountie. And then they then they become the Quebecers later on when they add uh, uh, Carl Olliot. Carl, Carl Pierre Olliot. Peace, PCO now. Yeah, love you. So uh, yeah, we the last appearance of the Rougeaus. Raymond would retire. Back here's what us. here's what killed me. Okay, so and it it goes back before that. And I didn't put this in my notes, but I'm just... This is a, a Jason sidebar here. I remember the Bushwhackers as the ultra-violent sheep, sheep herders, herders in the Mid-South. Yeah. And to see them, probably because they were getting later, later on in years and um, toward the latter part of their career, they, they probably said, you know what, if we can just kind of calm this down and become more of a, a kid's comedy act, it would probably... Be, Give us a few extra paydays <laughs> yeah, as we go along. I uh, so backtracking. I tried to explain to my friend one time because he uh, he found a picture of Stan Lane and um, Steve Kern right. as the fabulous the fabulous ones, ones. Yeah, where they were they were like male strippers, and my friend was just like, "How?" He's like, "These guys were pro wrestlers." I said, "Those guys." beat the road warriors to a pulp with steel mm. chairs and i said and those guys used to do dan lane and steve kern were legit yeah those guys pile drived people on the outside that was yeah. their finishing maneuver and i showed him a was... bunch of really grainy tapes of them and the sheep herders stabbing each other with forks oh man yeah, they just... had some ultra violent yeah matches. i was like so those are the bushwhackers but my favorite thing in this match is so they go to do the battering ram right the bushwhackers do and bobby heenan god bless him he's like he's using his head as a weapon and then immediately raymond rougeau headbutts luke and bobby is silent as the grave (laughs) (laughs) i could smell the bushwhackers from here Yeah, the match was not good, but listening to Bobby the Brain do, and Vince McMahon. Do yourself a favor if you have Peacock and you and you have and you can go back and just watch some old WWF and listen to Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan Would on commentary. Stop? It's some of the best stuff <laughs> ever. He doesn't know the meaning of the word quit. He doesn't know the meaning of a lot of words, Monsoon. <laughs> it, they, they, like Gorilla would like name body parts that didn't exist. Yeah. I think he tore his meniscus malubula fibula constribula there. You're making that up. You're making that up. <laughs> Bobby's like, you're making that up. <laughs> Bobby Heenan, got, I still say some of the insults he, I would hear him say, but... Yeah, Bobby just, the Brain. Just not, not a good match. And then... You go and to, then, and then it gets worse, kind of. It gets worse, but it's, also, not, it's not Lanny's fault. It's, no, you get worse, and then you get better. So you go to Brutus the effing barber beefcake, and Lanny Poffo, God bless you, God rest you. I so a couple of things. And Leslie, thank Hulk Hogan every day you wake up. So just a couple of that things. You guys were friends. That's Did, all I got to say about that. Lanny Poffo, when he would get in the ring, is the most interesting thing I've ever seen. He put one leg over, and he leans his back on the middle rope and slides in. And then when you're like, all right, Lanny, you're a snake. And then he takes a powder, right? And he jumps. And he talks just like this. Just like he does in Young his man, progress. I'm moving to Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> and he perks. He, so Brutus throws him on the outside. He's taking a powder, right? And then Lanny, cat-like, jumps on the apron 
and does a front roll into the ring. And every time Brutus goes to touch him, Lanny does the old gorgeous George run away. Like, how dare you touch me? It just, it was. Don't touch me, young man. It was the master, masterpiece of stalling and character work. And I had no idea how good Lanny Poffo was until a couple years ago. But really watching this, where the back rake, where he does the front flip to out of the ring. Like, just, Lanny Poffo was, in, I mean, he, the the Poffo genetics were incredible. Because Randy was was incredible. Their dad was incredible. Lanny was, in Poff, or was incredible. But just, he... This was the definition of everybody telling Lanny, be like, you're going to be working with Brutus. And he's like, well, I guess I'm going to be taking chicken excrement and making a five-star course of chicken soup. (laughs) And Lord did he, the genius, God bless him. Oh, man. And then Mr. Perfect does, and this is right, uh, this is right when Mr. Perfect started doing his run-ins and he's, uh, and him and, uh, him and Lanny are gonna hook up, and he's gonna give uh, Hulk Hogan his first television television via or televised yeah, televised loss. loss. Yeah. yeah, televised loss. And despite all the mythos around it, that smashed up belt did not become the no, WWF that was not, hardcore. That title. was not the hardcore championship. Yeah, uh, Mr. Perfect. That and, is a that is a long standing myth. Yeah, it is not the hardcore title that it became. But, no, we got Mr. Perfect when we got uh, Beefcake got some of Lanny's hair, which was really silly. And yep. then, so, then you go to the submission match, which had no business being as good being as it was. this good. But my favorite but part. But God bless Ron Garvin. Like, the fir- he's the first, like, legitimate superstar that I ever met. Yeah, Ronnie Garvin. In pro wrestling. Hands yeah. of Stone, Hands Ronnie of Garvin. Hands of Stone, Ron Garvin. Yeah, so, in like 19... God, I was a kid. The 1986. So do you know the backstory behind the Hammer Jammer? I, uh, something about... Oh, gosh. It was to protect from the figure four. Or no, the, I, I don't know. You're going to have to tell So me, in storyline, Greg Valentine starts wearing the steel shim pad that makes the figure four, figure more, four effective. More, more effective. Yeah. Now... For a shoot, it caused horrible bone spurs in Greg's leg, and it, it wearing it all the time and working in it because mm-hmm. it really did have a steel pad behind it. Wow. Um, it so he it caused long term damage to Greg Valentine, but so Ronnie Garvin is going to where he steals it. He steals one of the pads from Greg Valentine, and he's gonna wear it because if you're wearing it. The figure four is ineffective, so he's calling it the hammer jammer. So you have two of the hardest hitting sons of bitches to ever be, and for a submission match, the first like five minutes, they are beating each other. They're whipping the paint off of each other, and then they start going for pins. Like I just yeah, that was crazy. I was like, and I see this in every submission match. It was like, dude, people just like suddenly become Alzheimer's patients when they get in a submission match and, and forget they can't they have to beat their opponent by submission. So but then my favorite part is they start working their submissions. Like Ronnie's working for the Boston Crab. Like Brett and Austin it was like the first one I saw where yeah, they were no constantly pins. going for pin falls. Yeah. There's no pins. Um but, but this was a good match. It, it really was a solid Ronnie match. Gar- Ronnie Garvin starts working Greg's back for the for the Boston Crab and Greg starts working um, Ronnie's legs for the figure four and then it comes to the part where Ronnie Garvin is he's down right and Greg Valentine God bless him Greg Valentine goes to take the pad off and he can't get it off he tries for like <laughs> five minutes he's trying to take the hammer jammer off and he can't do it and then out of nowhere Jimmy Hart comes and takes it off instantly right yeah. like, he just he pulls it off immediately <laughs> but just, unintentional uh, hilarity ensues uh, but that was an incredible match i loved it um i forgot who won it was garvin did oh yeah ronnie yeah. pops the boston crab on and wins yeah it was, it was like an indian it was like an indian death lock they kept calling it figure four but it was an indian yeah death he lock. does the um, he does the triple h indian death lock yeah um and then 
Uh, from there we go. Uh, hold on, the car shut off. Uh, well, it's it, it decided. Yeah. It decided. Okay, you've been sitting here long enough. Yeah. So from there we go yeah, from. Started back up again. The world's greatest detective. Oh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> Hacksaw Jim Duggan to Big Boss Man, and Lord have mercy. They missed an opportunity for Hacksaw to be in a Naked Gun movie. I think. Yeah, they really did. Because. The, man, I'll tell you. Another freaking DQ, though. In yeah. This match. So, but you it know, was sh- it was short. Too. You know what's crazy about it, though? Is, Why is it beeping at me? Uh, Seatbelts. Is it? Oh. Uh, the my favorite. We're not moving. Yeah, my favorite I part. Think I put my hand on the wheel. My favorite part about all of it is every time Jim Duggan touched Ray Trailer, the Big Boss Man. Big Boss Man did like a backflip and flopped all around. Oh my god! And just. Ray Trailer was so he good. He sold like a cruiser wing. God, he was. Crazy. He did like at one point. Hacksaw does that big clothesline, and Ray Taylor take that big like sideways corkscrew Billy Gun. Oh bump. yeah, yep. Just God, you were incredible, Ray Trailer, and another DQ, and then that's just oh, my God. And then you go to the Royal Rumble. One one more thing about Boss Man. Just one of the the. Hate that he's gone. Just one yeah. of the sweetest, nicest guys you ever wanted to meet on on the planet. I, rem- I had the opportunity to meet him in in Myrtle Beach, and we actually went to <laughs> we a- we actually went to a, a a a a bar called Melons, which was I guess Conway's uh, version of Hooters. Yeah. And anyway, there's there's a story behind that, but anyway, that's <laughs> a great trailer. You were a sweetheart. Yeah, you were so wonderful. Thank you for being wonderful. Uh, and then you go. So people are under the misconception if they go back and watch old Royal Rumbles, the Royal Rumble winner, the Royal Rumble winner, did not always get not a, in, not in this era. They did no. not get the shot at the the, the world the world title. So if you won the Royal Rumble, that's going to be. Fun to, if you, you, were, you, if were, you just, were the winner of the Royal Rumble, you won the Royal Rumble. That's yeah, you you, you were just the guy that won the Rumble. You're the guy that yeah. But so you, it's going to be the first face off with Hogan and the Warrior since uh, last year when Hulk Hogan ran in and threw the Warrior well, out. Ted, well, Ted DiBiase gets the MVP for the longevity. Yeah, he's award. in there for forever. Forty four, um, forty four minutes, I think. But you have some of my favorite interviews. Like when uh, when Demolition Axe and Smash are just he's like Demolition Axe might be my tag team partner, but there ain't no tag team partners tonight in the Royal Rumble, and I'm gonna show him first what's gonna happen. And just Hexel <laughs> Jim Duggan, there might be 29 other tough guys, but I'm the toughest guy. Ho! <laughs> and just. <laughs> And then the Ultimate Warrior is just like, Tonight is the night that Hulk Hogan will have to face the power of the Warriors. Because I'm going to take 29 other men and throw them over the top rope. And then you're like, it can't get any more silly than... Well, let me tell you something there, Mean Gene. There might be 29 other dudes in the Rumble, but the Hulkster's got the power of Hulkamania, and the Hulkster's got the 39-inch line back, pal. And I'm going to take one each guy, and I'm going to heave and hoe and throw one right after the other, and then they're all going to know that the Hulkster's the real ruler of the Royal Rumble. And it's like, <laughs> nobody said anything. Damn, I'm dead inside. <laughs> Nobody just did it. <laughs> nobody said anything. What the world what was happening to my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. You go. Nobody remembers why they're actually fighting. <laughs> well, I was going to say I always found the Royal Rumble strange until they added that stipulation yeah. about about the title because it was like, why are we fighting? Yeah, so. <laughs> So for the t- prestige of winning the Royal Rumble, well, that means nothing. So Ted DiBiase, That's probably why the champion won it twice because yeah. he was the champion. Yeah, so it means nothing. Uh, the uh, Ted DiBiase is in there for forever. Hogan's in there, and this is when you have your big face-off where. Warriors cleaning one side of there, and my God, i see. I think that's revision. Again, I'm going back to what I said earlier. I think it's revisionist history. That people got that face off, and the, and that, that that's the part they remember. They think, oh man, this that must have been an awesome show. Are you kidding me? No, and no, and it's another thing where it's revisionist history where people are trying to say that the warrior 
didn't get as big of a pop as Hulk Hogan. Are you insane? That's so not true. So I cannot tell you. For, yes, it was a finite number of years. It was from like 1985 to 1992. But in that time, nobody got the kind of reaction the Ultimate Warrior got. And I, I am a pro wrestling fan because of the Ultimate Warrior. I almost wore an Ultimate Warrior shirt that was covered in glitter. Not the the Warrior. The let me let me jump in here. Oh, you're good. The the Warrior, as bad as he may have been backstage, and you heard all these stories and these things of, of that nature, and I think he unnecessarily got the blame for the downturn in business. When, if you look at the year 1990, it just wasn't a good year for pro wrestling whatsoever. No, so... Both companies were struggling because, I mean, the, the you know, the, the peak of pro wrestling in, the, in that uh, era was probably 88. Well, then in 88, what happens? WCW gets sold, and, you know, Hulkamania has been running wild for how many years? I mean, sooner or later, you run with a pat hand. I don't blame Vince for putting the title on Warrior because he had to try something different. So it drives me nuts, Jason, because Warrior gets all the blame for the business Warrior downturn. Warrior gets all the blame. He gets all the blame for the business downturn in 89, 90, 91. But you know who never gets any blame for the downturn in business in 95, 96, 97? Vince McMahon? Shawn Michaels. No, I, no uh, he does. Only from smart guys like I, you. I think he. I think he gets some heat for the downturn of business. But it's so. Uh, it, yes, the business went down when Warrior was champion. They were running smaller houses. They had a lot of problems, not just the war. But when the Warrior comes out, you it people went banana. Banana. Like, like Pat. Well, like Pat would say. The business really didn't get hot again. Like between 1990 and what, like 96, 97. It, well, I mean, WWF was playing catch up at that point, but yeah. I mean, you know, it didn't really turn around until the NWO. No, the wrestling as a whole didn't turn Wrestle, around yeah, the NWO. until the NWO. And WWF didn't turn around. WCW until... business was starting to turn when they got Hogan, but then even he, it, his yeah, stuff he had, had slacked off. off, dropped off. So it, the whole business. The Monday Night War reignited the, the rest yeah, of the it. Yeah, and that's a whole thing of why WWF went, became such an international company from 93 to 95 is because Bret Hart was selling out every place in Europe. Right, that's where it, they could draw crowds, yeah, it, the, the European market. And, and that's what happened. And he was hot over there. Yeah, he was hot he, ski. Yeah, Bret was, and then he was hot in Canada, he was hot in Mexico, he was hot everywhere. But so the whole thing of trying to say that the warrior wasn't as popular, the warrior was a failure as a draw. It's just simply not true, and you see it in this Royal Rumble. It's just the it's just the time. It's it's. I think more than anything else, it's just the time periods. Yeah, it, it's just how it was. So warrior comes out and starts laying the waste, and God bless Rick the Model Martel for that forward face bump he took out of oh, the ring. Yep. And then when I was like, oh man, nobody's gonna top this, Rick Rude does the ultimate back or the ultimate atomic drop back jump out of the ring. And I was like, my God, these guys, I love it. And then the warrior gets eliminated, right? And then he runs back in, clears house, helps Hulk Hogan, and then runs and away. Then runs away. <laughs> and, and Hulk Hogan ah, the whole time. Ah, 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 ah. You know, the the warrior runs off, and then Hogan is left to his own devices. And Mister uh, Mister Perfect comes in, and they they leave Hogan laying right, and they steal the winged eagle, and they smash it up. Smashed. And that's that's Royal Rumble nineteen ninety. And I love. And it. after just aftermath, by the way, so that led to what the SMEs with what. Lanny and Perfect and stuff like yeah. that. And of course, all the build up to Mania, and you know what happened there. And, and WrestleMania. Oh, six. I'm sorry. I, let me let me don't assume that everybody's a wrestling fan that listens to this show. You, know? <laughs> you want to know what happened? The Warrior and Hulk Hogan met up in the ring and at WrestleMania six. And Warrior and Warrior won the title. Yeah, and I. So also, Nick, this is a special treasure for you from me. A Royal Rumble 1990 is the reason why I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling for a long time in the Harder household because we were, me and my brothers were sitting there watching it and I painted my face with my mom's lipstick and my dad's shoe polish. 
to paint a Ultimate Warrior symbol, symbol on, on his face. face. And I thought that if I had the Ultimate Warrior symbol on my face, I had the power of the warrior, and I could gorilla press slam people. So I would try to gorilla press <laughs> slam my brothers. And my brothers are shit talking the entire time. The warrior's gonna lose. Hulk Hogan's gonna win. Because Hulk Hogan was in Rocky. I don't care. And this goes on for a while. I decided I had had enough of the warrior, you know, insults. I'd had enough of them running down my precious warrior. So I go to the kitchen and I grab an old pot and I start molly whopping my brothers with a pot. Um, because I had the power of the warrior. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and... Well, let me tell you. For an object. I, uh, the warrior would not have been proud of me for being a little warrior and using <laughs> my, a weapon instead of my own iron will and my my bare fist. But, hey, they were bigger than me. So I had to level the playing field with a, with a pot. <laughs> so I didn't get to watch wrestling again for like another six months, and it hurt my soul. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the Adam Harder show today. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care. <laughs> I do. I love. I love old wrestling. I love '90s pro wrestling, and I didn't realize how stupid this show was. To you know, what, you know what we should cover uh, on. We need to cover what. Which one was the Halloween Havoc that they tried to? Nineteen ninety eight. The switch got me, No, the the switch. Got messed oh, up when with Abdullah? the electrified cage. Was ninety two? Yeah, when Abdullah is in the electric chair. We gotta, we gotta cover that. And the switch falls, and Abdullah's shaking all and, around. And, we, and Cactus is trying to put it back, yeah. and climb up, and put it back in place. And Scotty Steiner is just like, huh? I'd forgotten about the switch. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, I asked Scott about that switch one time. He's like, nobody told us we were supposed to pull the switch. He's like, it's a pro wrestling match and we're sentencing a guy to death? Right. He's like, he's like, I don't know much about law, but I don't think that's exactly illegal. Doesn't he need a trial? Yeah, that was... <laughs> and he's guilty of being Abdullah the Pacino. That was, oh man, that was the, the era of crazy gimmicks with the, the electrified cage and yeah. spin the wheel, make the deal. <laughs> Uh, uh, the White Castle of Fear. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is better than Not, the Bash of the Beach when they had the the dwarfs and the the laser eye. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the, the, he, he was trying to plant the bomb. On the yeah, because he tried. They're, they're gonna kill him. Ooh. They're gonna kill the bulldog. Yeah, and they're gonna kill Steve. They're not. They're not even gonna make it to the pay per view. <laughs> they're gonna blow him up. Oh God! That was at the point of WCW that I really loved when it was ultra silly. That's when it RoboCop was, is showing up. Oh my God! I uh, loved it. There was oh, there's so much. Oh, God, and when you think you can't get any better, Kevin Sullivan is running through the woods yelling, Yes, Master! Yes! Because it's the Dungeon of Doom! Oh, God! Oh, Brutus Beefcake, you're terrible. You were the Zoe Oh, Eric. and Uncle Eric, like, my question to you was ridiculous, but you never answered the first part about the Dungeon of Doom. Yeah, when Hogan went dark. <laughs> yeah, he never answered that part. Yeah. It's because it's a valid question. Uh, Hogan, Lu- he gets his mustache shaved, and he's all evil. I wanted to know, did that influence the the, the NWO turn in 96? Because that was the first time i seen Hogan in all the black. Yeah, I liked it. He got caught up on the Batista question. <laughs> he just, just decided he was going <laughs> to derail me from there. Uh, yeah, Jason, this has been so much fun. This was fun. I hurt my voice a little bit doing a recreation of all the backstage interviews. Well, that'll teach you. That'll teach me to be excited for <laughs> for pro wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope I hope everyone had fun today. And if you did, I had fun. And if you didn't, well, you, kick I don't know. sand. Kick sand. Yeah, kick rocks. Kick rocks. Kick, kick sand. Rocks. Go watch a Johnny Gar. Gar. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go watch a Johnny from. Go watch a Johnny Wrestling. So, the, so in conclusion, before we wrap up here, we're we're gonna be under attack by the Gargano and Adam Cole fans of the world. <laughs> I hope. I hope all two of them. All, all, yeah. And you stack them up together. The Gargano, the Gargano and Cole family. You stack them up together. They are four feet tall. They're like an AEW crowd. Oh. 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 Right. Well, I love you all. Thank you guys. Oh, well, somebody pointed out to me. This is nonsense. But <laughs> they pointed out to me that Vancouver 
sold 6,000 tickets, and I'm like, okay. What, what were the, the Canadians? Well, they're on, a, well, they're on a, okay, they're on a upswing. Okay. Go ahead. Were the Oilers not playing? Keep, or? keep, keep, keep coming back. Keep coming back. You know what? I hear you are snorting grade A copium. Because you're coping. <laughs> what? Copium. It's Cop- like the drug. Copium? Yeah, it's the drug people take when they're coping. Coping? Yeah. You're coping. Oh, oh, that, oh. Yeah. Was that Adam Copeland joke? No, it's coping because, you know. Oh, I th- <laughs> I'm sorry. They, they keep using cope with everything, trying to get oh, that yeah. over. Yeah, so. he's coping. Yeah. With the fact that he is not in the WWE right now doing a burn. burn. I heard it wasn't even that big of a raise. No, it wasn't. Like, it ha- was- like ha- what, half a mil? Yeah, not not enough to, to ruin your legacy. No. But anyway. You wanted to work with his friend? We'll 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 trash AEW another time. Yeah. <laughs> By making you watch it. <laughs> right. All right. Well I don't even wa- I don't even watch collusion. Well you and I won't torture myself. You and nine million other people. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I think I have to cut this part. Out of the program. If you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. I don't know. I don't know what I. I don't know what I want to do. Uh, All right. Because we go an hour. Hour five minutes. Jesus. Jesus. I'll be splitting that up. Trying to upload it. (laughs) All right, guys. Hey, thanks for no. But seriously, I'm going to go ahead and close it out. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to Looking Up at the Lights, your favorite wrestling podcast. Mine too. Thank you. All right, guys. We will see you next time. Uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Keep listening. Keep tuning in. We'll see you next time.